View. There were a few blissful hours of quiet in the Twitter sphere. That silence broken this morning with a couple of tweets from the president contradicting what the White House said in a statement yesterday. They seem to be happy with or at least content with the appointment of a special counsel yesterday. What changed and how has this affected the mood at the White House today? Well, it's really in, <clears throat> interesting how you point those two out. It was almost like a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde statements we saw out of the White House. Um, you know, last night, the White House was given about a half-hour notice that this announcement was coming. Uh, the president was informed. We were told that he dictated a statement himself with the help of some aides that essentially said, you know, we welcome this. Let's, you know, we look forward to this investigation being over quickly. There's nothing here. Uh, it seemed like the White House was going to use this as an opportunity to cool the temperature, to sort of call Calm things down, get some of the drama uh, out of the air with this appointment of a special counsel. Um, but then uh, this morning, uh, of course, you know, you can always speculate, but we know the president watches cable news in the morning. It was not very favorable, uh, you know. And once again, he was off on Twitter, um, you know, uh, you know, trying to bring this issue back into the front and raising the temperature once again. Eli, like you said, that this was a favor that Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general, did uh, for the White House. Do you think that they no longer see it as such? Well, I, I predict that probably Donald Trump doesn't think of it as a favor because he keeps talking about how fraudulent the uh, investigation is in the first place. But um, just with a little bit of perspective, uh, the last eight days in Washington with this White House were unsustainable. I have been talking to Republicans. You saw a really important mood shift, the fact that you couldn't find any Republican lawmakers really to defend the president after that explosive story about the Jim Comey memo hit. Um, it's, it was a political crisis point. Now that there is a special counsel, there is some breathing room and the president can focus on his actual agenda and try to be the president again instead of dealing with this crisis, this scandal that's kind of, you know, consuming his administration. And I would just point out, we still haven't seen any kind of evidence of collusion at this point, although there's a lot of smoke. And, you know, if there's, if there's nothing there, I mean, I think the president has compounded these errors, then he should welcome a guy like Bob Mueller, who's trusted by both parties and all sides, to get to the bottom of it. Um, he just seems to always be acting like he's got something to hide. Tim O'Brien, let me ask you about how difficult it's going to be for uh, Robert Mueller, who's been widely applauded, the pick has been widely applauded here, to conduct his investigation without political in interference. In light of what we saw this morning, does that portend for you a, a lot more attempts at interference by the White House? No, I mean, I think, I think the Comey removal almost insulates Mueller now, because this White House, at this point, if they tried to interfere, with Bob Mueller on this investigation would be looking at clear obstruction of justice charges. It's, it's this, that whole interference issue, I think, is insulated. Mueller's an, uh, an aggressive investigator. And I depart with Eli a little on this being a, I guess, um, you know, a breather for the White House. It's certainly, it's a breather for them, but I think the stakes just ramped up incredibly. You know, Mueller, doesn't have to only focus now on collusion with Russia during the 2016 campaign. He's empowered to pursue any leads that come out of that investigation. This could take a very strong financial tack now into Trump's businesses that it might not have before, into other relationships. These investigations are long. You know, the Cisnero investigation, I think, was almost 15 mm -hmm. years. Whitewater, I think, was eight. Uh, Watergate was about two. Uh, this could go on for many years. It could ensnare many people, possibly. And it's, it's unpredictable where it will go. And I, and I think that this is a White House that is not uh, experienced or adept at moments like this, particularly in the person of the president. And I think they've actually created a worse situation for themselves. Eli, let me ask you what this means for Michael Flynn, the first national security advisor that President Trump uh, picked. He's been uh, widely talked about, widely speculated about his motivations in, in the press. What does this investigation mean for him and for his reputation? Listen, um, he clearly should have disclosed uh, to the Pentagon that he'd accepted payment from the Russian propaganda network. And uh, we now know after the fact that he should have not only lob uh, registered as the Lobby and Disclosure Act, but also the Foreign Agents Registration Act for business that he'd done uh, with a businessman from Turkey. And there's a whole lot of questions that have been raised recently about whether those payments influenced, you know, some of his decisions during the transition, particularly with regard to a plan uh, to work on Raqqa. But we have yet to hear really Flynn's side of the story. And it's, you cannot help but notice that um, I think partisans have run wild with uh, speculation and allegations that Flynn is a disloyal American and possibly a traitor, a Russian spy. You hear it so casually at this point that I do think that having a professional investigation uh, then, and, a, and a fair process 
could give Flynn the opportunity to ultimately clear his name if, um, you know, his sins here are basically a kind of incompetence and stupidity and not something more treacherous. Shannon, the department of getting ahead of themselves, perhaps a lot of analysts in Washington are writing about Vice President Mike Pence. He started a new uh, war chest, the Great America Committee. He's going to be uh, divvying out money to various political uh, causes, it seems. What role is he playing here within the administration? Is he playing at all a public role uh, as this, this all unfolds? Uh, he's playing a very big role um, on the Hill. He is the White House's man on the Hill with the House, with the Senate. He's up there all the time. He's very well respected. He's very crucial in getting this administration's agenda through on the Hill. And this pack indicates that I think he's going to be playing a much bigger role in 2018 as sort of the White House surrogate out there campaigning for all these members of the House who are up for reelection. Maybe if the president is the most toxic man in Washington, you can always have the vice president who, you know, has done a very good job so far of maintaining a good reputation, you know, really especially among Republicans. So he's already been out there a little bit on the campaign trail. I think this signals 2018, and it could also signal a future presidential run for him down the road at some point. Very speculative, but often when you see someone creating one of these packs, that's kind of a nod that their political career probably isn't going to end uh, with their current position. Tim, let me put the last question to you here. How does this story change if we see the tapes, whether or not they, they exist, what was recorded or perhaps recorded within the, the Oval Office, or the memo uh, that was read to a reporter from the New York Times and, and has been quoted or cited by other news outlets uh, as well? Does the story change when we see that kind of documentation or hear that type of documentation? Well, I think it's important that, that the public can get whatever transparency they can on these source materials, whether it's the Comey memo. Uh, as you know, I highly doubt Donald Trump has taped um, his conversations and you have some experience with Comey, this, so, yeah. but I could be wrong. Uh, but if those tapes exist, those should come out as well. Um, I think one of the things which Eli pointed to earlier as well is that the people involved who are targets in this process deserve to have a clean process around them so the facts can come out. And I think that um, I think that's going to be the big end game here is, is where does the rubber meet the road in terms of incriminating evidence.